one of the questions um, that it's important, I think, for our audience is, you know, what should they do daily, weekly, or monthly? Like, what should they do in their account once they're in, if they're repricing? Especially when they need to do filters, right? Yeah. 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 So what we would recommend here, you know, one of the things they can do is they can look at their business reports um, on a regular basis, on a daily basis, and they can, you know, see whether, you know, how's their sales doing, uh, what's your buy box win percentage, is there's ups and downs. Uh, and they could actually also look at specific listings as well. Like if they have a listing that they really care about, that they want to get rid of, they want to get at, for example, it's a very expensive item that they, they want to just clear out a one-off, then they can actually find that listing and see the performance for that listing. You know, what's really interesting is you could actually check when you switch to the AI listing, you're so much, it's performed so much better when you switch to the AI listing um, and you could actually check the comparison between different rules. Uh, another thing it's really important to do, you know, the filters that you're talking about. Yeah. You should do this maybe a daily or a weekly basis. You go into the account, there's default filters, and you can actually choose listings at the min price. So we could see that, you know, these listings are at the min price, which means that it's below the mean price. It means the competitors are competing for that listings are pricing below your mean price. So which means you're not going to have a guarantee chance to win that buy box. And uh, what we normally would do is to ask the customers or no, the um, them and the sellers to check those listings and to maybe readjust their main price uh, to a certain degree that may give them another fighting chance. And um, some people um, set their main price quite high. Uh, so this may be one of the reasons that's causing them on losing the buy box or not winning the buy box at all. So, you know, there are certain times that you just need to bite the bullets and sort of, um, you know, uh, realize that, okay, so this is the kind of competitions is happening and I may need to lose out on some profit. But whilst do making my listing profitable, I maybe need to lower my main price a bit just to be a lot more price and competitive. And uh, we see a lot of um, Amazon sellers, you know, even to those established sellers, you know, they're panicking. They're like, oh, why is my um, uh, listings not, not winning the buy box? How come I'm not repricing to the buy box? And in the end of the day, it's usually when we check their accounts, when we check their listings, they they like they have their main price so high. It's like exactly the same as other competitors' max price. And of course, you're not going to win the buy box because Amazon is a custom-centric platform like we mentioned before. They want your price to be as competitive as ever. And so that customers are happy. So they're custom they, So general consumers can actually get the cheapest price. And so it's still a very pricing intensive platforms in terms of competitions on Amazon. So that's why we definitely recommend you use uh, any users using Beacle to utilize the default settings for the filters and to find out what listings are sitting um, at Ming. You know, what are the listings that have a very intense competitions and are beating you to the buy box. But we don't generally say, uh, recommend you to readjust the main price to all of the listings because here at Beacle, we still want to retain the, you know, like maximize your profits, you know, retain your profit, increase your ROI. And usually what we recommend you to do is to underline, un understand the situations and wait for those low bowlers to sell out. And then you just sell back in and win the buy box for more profits because, you know, some of the low bowlers, even though um, they are selling at a very low price, they may have a, a little uh, number of inventories that have very low stock, stock. So when they sell out, it's your turn to shine. Yep. So uh, yeah, this go ahead. A, a quick teaching moment. And I love finding those teaching moments. If you can click on that calculator on one of the min prices. Um, one of the things that a lot of uh, newer sellers, especially, but even some more experienced sellers, uh, they don't get is that there are some costs that you're not seeing within be cool that gen that come in automatically that you have to add and that additional cost box is a very important box because you could be competing against someone who doesn't really understand their cost you know that that additional cost That's could right. be your shipping to amazon uh, right. fees and yeah. it, there's nowhere because that's it's an estimate if you're using uh, inventory lab you're estimating what your per pound basis is but as soon as you create the shipment you have the total dollar and it's important to have some kind of a strategy in place to actually know what your per item additional cost for that shipping is so you can put it in here so your numbers are as accurate as possible. And this really comes into play when you have 
oversized products, the heavy stuff that are yes. going further away. Mm -hmm. You know, you can you can ship to the closest warehouse with 20 to 30 cents per pound. But if it's heavier, it's going to run you maybe 90 cents, maybe a dollar 50 per pound. And if you're That's missing right. that in there, you think you're having a 30 percent ROI, but in fact, you're actually losing money. Absolutely. Very well said. And I think that's what separates the seven-figure sellers to the average riffraff <laughs> selling on Amazons. So yeah, as you can see, um, this is the seven-figure uh, mindset. Uh, there are a lot of hidden costs on Amazons. You know, people don't even realize even the packages that they um, buy and pack the stuff. There's some, some, some of the people don't even take that into account. Some of the people don't even think that labeling costs uh, should be considered. So I think all these additional costs, uh, the hidden costs should actually be putting into the um, profit calculator, like you said. Uh, just to optimize your final sales price on uh, Amazon for the repricer to adjust. Yes, very well said. It's good. Yep. And then another thing that you can do is you can find the listings at the max price. And then if you're using, when you're using the AI for these, it means that you could actually increase the max price. Uh, you could actually put the max price. This means that this is selling, that the buy box that you're selling, it's keep on selling at the max price. So you could actually increase the price of that. Uh, and, and our recommendation, again, for these type of lists, you go to the competitor analysis, um, and then you could actually find, uh, our example, you don't see it, but you will see what's the most expensive someone's listing this on Amazon. And that would be the price that we recommend you to set. So you could actually increase your profits, and you can make sure you're not going to be delisted uh, by putting that price in, because that price is already in the table. Yeah. So that's a that's a tip that we that we want to give people. Again, you could also uh, look at the offers and filters. There's some filters here. Um, so that's the default filters. You go to the bottom here. Uh, one of the things we like to do we like to look at the items between uh, five and twenty, and then these are the items um, that you could actually put on. You know, the different AI repricing. You could do the repricing rules. Because if it's over 20, 20 competitors, then it's going to be really hard for you to compete. Yeah, if your products happen to be, um, this happens a lot for a lot of, um, I would say, booksellers. Um, sometimes when they're selling books on Amazon, there are so many people competing against your book listings. And you maybe fall right outside of that top 20 com competitors in, or in terms of um, pricing. And uh, usually when that happens, it's very difficult for you to compete because um, there's just no way for those people to actually get the buy box since their main price is so high. So what we would recommend you to do is to also underline this, understand, realize the situations that uh, some of those listings aren't just meant to be getting the buy box for the pricing that you have on there. And maybe it's much better to um, utilize another strategy to rethink how you're going to uh, fix those listings. So yes. Do you, do you guys have any more questions for this area about the filters to use? And so we recommend, you know, three things. One is look at the business uh, reports to see your sales, to see your win percentage. You could also other options that you can choose on there to, to look at. And then the second thing um, we recommend to do daily and weekly is to look at the min price uh, to make sure you make the right adjustments. Uh, so you have enough ROI. So you could actually sell out the product. You could actually win the buy box because at the end of the day, you got to win the buy box to have any sales. So no buy box, no sales. Yes, buy box, more sales, and then more profits. And you could actually turn your stock into cash. Uh, so you could continue to uh, fund your Amazon business and grow it. Uh, definitely. Yeah. One of the things I really like about um, you know the, the, the filter section specifically that I think might be a little bit too advanced for us to go through right now, but maybe on a future uh, episode, we can talk about it. Is yeah, that's right. That's right. That's I right. think filters, it's, um, it's a magnificent thing because there are so many um, strategies you can actually do with them, you know, by setting categories, setting like uh, specialized repricing strategies to a certain group of listings. Yeah, I think we can definitely go into that more in depth, you know, for the upcoming, uh, for the future episodes. Yes. Yeah. So um, three very simple rules for beginners. You know, we, we do recommend the AI rules for beginners because it's a lot easier to set up. Um, and then we recommend using the moderate competition rule if you're just starting out. And then if you want to be more aggressive, then you can use the intense competition or you can use uh, the buy box winner three, which is raising the buy box prices. And then you can directly apply that by bulk, uh, by all the listings you want. And we have videos that teaches you how to do that. Um, I think yeah. we just showed you on the screen. 
and, and then, I think it's sorry to cut you off, but I think it's yeah, important yeah. to point out that it's not either or. You can create all three rules and cool. assign them to different groups of your ASINs to different, you know, th these ASINs you want to really uh, sell out real fast. So you assign the more aggressive rule to it. And then other ones that you're okay with keeping the ROI high and maybe not be as aggressive with, and you can set the different rules out. It's not that it's just one rule and all of your uh, ASINs get that rule. Precisely. Yes. You can, you can um, assign different um, rules that will fit into the descriptions of how you want to sell those listings. And yeah, like you say, if some of the listings that you require liquidations that you want to sell fast, accelerate your accelerate your sales velocities, definitely you try the rules that reprise the most aggressive and you know the most competitive. That's yeah, great. absolutely. You can set different rules according to different ASINs, whether it's a replenish item, uh, whether it's a one-time liquidation, like like just like you as mentioned. Yeah, and you can have different combinations, uh, and you can also do it by groupings to also save you a lot of time. And then uh, we talked about this, you know, adjusting the prices uh, for the ones that are uh, below main, and then uh, to make sure that you're able to, you know, get the buy box. Um, another option is to wait till the competitor sells out, and you can actually look at the competitor analysis to see, uh, you know, how much to, to see, uh, you know, oh, back order, right? back order, yeah, yes, back order, back yes. Time. So yeah, yeah, we this is actually a very interesting point because uh, there are times that you have competitors who have back orders and they can still sell, but they're gonna lose the buy box. So what you what happens is if they are using a repricer, they will actually um set your price, set their price to max. So is it just a way to prevent prevent them to continue having the back order situations? No, and then we're losing the buy box. And this is what we would recommend is when you see that happening and you can actually um, find that through the filters that you see the buy box price is at max. What we say is you just follow them, you know, stick with the pricing. You also raise up the price to match what they have and try to beat them to the buy box for more profits. So this is also another way to adjust the price above max issues. And yeah, I think that's, um, but you need to do it sensibly, you know, exercise caution because sometimes when you price your item a bit too high, uh, Amazon may uh, delist you, you know, they may suppress that buy box because Amazon thinks, okay, you guys are sort of on price gorging there. And this is something that you need to be mindful of. So let me ask you guys a, a question that Leland would, would call uh, the secret sauce. Mm. Um, have you guys seen any difference between winning the buy box if you're repricing based on a you know a penny under uh, versus a percentage uh, change in the in the price? It depends. It depends. Depends on competition and depends on the products. It also depends on how the sellers um, uh, strategize uh, their repricing rules. And what we have um, discovered is that it's not so much about the percentage. It's a bit more about how much the integrate values that they have on the uh, final, final pricing. So sometimes some, some of the customers, they may reprice based on percentage, but usually the percentage would have uh, greater differences in the final price that they're going to reach. For example, if you price, for example, if you lower price by like 5%, right? You may actually uh, competing against a, a competitor at a much um, price um, differences. So for example, if this guy is selling at 10, and if you um, price by percentage, you may be actually undercutting them by more pennies. And that's, this is why some of, the, some of the sellers, they much prefer to undercut by a penny, by just uh, uh, integrated values to, uh, you know, by amounts to, to compete against the competitors. So they can actually just do it by one penny at a time. So they're not losing too much because they may think that uh, if I um, undercut them, by um, by five pennies, I win the buy box. But what happened if I'm the by three pennies, I still win the buy box. But that means I'm losing out by two pennies, right? So some of the some of the customers, they are a lot more um, I would say meticulous about this. They when they price, they actually want to just do a penny by penny. But yeah, I think it also depends on the person on, on the personal taste. And some people, you know, different stroke for different bloke, and they may they may think that percentage is much more. Um, much better for the business model. And this is why we recommend to use AI because I think AI can actually predict that a lot better. And the reason I said this is because um, the three different AI models that we have, um, they all 
have a different behavior. It's like personalities for the AIs. Um, you have the aggressive personality ones for the AI. They always want to compete, compete, and compete, get the buy box. Uh, the other one, you have a lot more reserve, you know, pretty chill, pretty laid back, like like, like us here, <laughs> just like, you know, compete, <laughs> um, you know, uh, not, not being too aggressive. And also there's a moderate ones where you just, sometimes they're a bit aggressive, sometimes there's a lot more reserve. And for the aggressive one, usually that's, um, they're doing it by percent, it's sort of by percentage uh, because you can actually, um, you can, you can find a lot more headrooms, you know, to know what's the optimum price because they're actually ex exploring uh, bigger margins of, um, I'll say, the price differences. But for the more reserved one, there's always just like, you know, um, I wouldn't say stagnant, but you just price a lot more reserve by a penny and, and such, you know, so the up and down is not as dramatic as the aggressive one. So I think that hopes, you know, answers your questions. It, it, it does. Um, th th there are some, th there's a strategy out there by mm. that some sellers, you know, the, mm. the, the good guys, uh, uh -huh. lack of a better phrase, uh, mm. who don't want to do a race to the bottom, who don't want to mm. do a penny down, a penny down mm -hmm. until they hit their minimum. And th the strategy <laughs> is that because Amazon allow, you know, allows you to turn into the buy box, if you're within, you know, usually within 5% of the buy box price, mm -hmm then they want to keep their price just above the min mm -hmm. so that they get a turn, but they don't, they're not the cause of the price tanking. I know what um, you mean. Right. Buy box rotations, right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for someone like that, um, if they are looking to really maximize their profits, but still get the buy box rotation without dropping the price, it would seem like it would make more sense if they're like, all right, so I, I, I want to be 2% above the buy box price instead mm -hmm. of, you know, two cents above the buy box price. So that way, the higher they are, the higher the other repricer is going to come up to match them. Does that make that's sense? A, that's absolutely, that absolutely makes sense. Yeah. And it's a very logical way to do business on Amazon, especially uh, when there are so many intense competition for a lot of listings. And I think in order for the, a uh, lot of our sellers to make the business stay afloat, um, but not having this, um, I was saying, malicious toxic environment to sell on i'll definitely recommend using percentage even for myself i think percentage wise it's a lot more um, friendliest um towards the overall you know selling environments on amazon's because undercutting is a serious issue and also you may have customers you have sellers from other countries you know selling you uh, selling at a ridiculous low price just to try to kick out the buy box and it's just not healthy for the general um selling experience on amazon's and um, yes, but I think percentage wise is, is definitely doable. But you, you always have those sellers who want to get the buy box, you know, all themselves. They want to get it because maybe they can, maybe they're wholesalers, they can source the products at a much cheaper price compared to you guys. And this is also another point that I wish to raise is that when you have a dedicated um, guy that you want to uh, you sell, source from, for example, you have a company that you have a contract with, um, do remember that talk to them about, okay, if you uh, are selling these products to other Amazon sellers as well, you know, if you're giving those products, can you please ask them to stick to a, um, a minimum price, like a recommended, like a manufacturer suggested price? Do not undercut that. But it, because if you do, if you find those, those bad actors undercutting you, selling below the um, suggested manufacturer's price, Report, report them to them. Maybe just get their, um, um, get their license, like, you know, revoke or something because it's just not healthy for the competitions. Yes, I agree. Mm. So um, we're going to go into the six key benefits uh, for Equal for this first section here. First, we are results driven. So we've been in the business for you know, more than 10 years and we've are established by top Amazon sellers. Yeah, the, the company is, is still owned by Amazon sellers. And then we also have a large number of AI engineers. Um, so we have one of the highest in the industry and we continue to update uh, with new features as Amazon updates. Uh, we also have very secure data. So uh, we're part of that, you know, invite only Amazon Marketplace uh, Development Council. Uh, we're a featured partner on Amazon and we also are Amazon Solution Provider Network. So it's completely secure. We're also an AWS server featured partner as well. We're also highly recommended on uh, third-party websites like Trustpilot. Um, and if you also look at us, look us up in the Marketplace App Store, you can also see us there with good ratings. We have over 4.8 ratings by hundreds and hundreds of customers uh, who have good success. And we also have a free trial uh, for 14 days that you can. Uh, that's totally scalable. 
Uh, so it's risk-free to try out and uh, there's a plan for everyone. And then we also have features like the AI, uh, which really saves time and it's the easiest and fastest way to set up your pricing. So it really saves your time. Talking about the AI, you know, we're, we're going to move right into the AI and help you understand, you know, why did we develop, you know, the AI repricing? And, you know, one of the reasons is um, in the Amazon land, you know, it's getting more and more competitive, more people are using third party software. So it's really getting more competitive. Um, there's over 2.5 million sellers on Amazon and more and more sellers are joining. Uh, so it's a very competitive landscape. And the second reason is that the AI applications in Amazon, um, for example, PPC is becoming more and more mature. People are accepting, they accept this, it's accepted by the Amazon seller. And then you know, the, the last third, third reason is that the product is ready, it's been tested, it's been engineered for many, many years, and it's now ready, it's been tested in the market uh, for the AI repricing. If I could just add one thing in here, because in, in, in this tech culture we have right now, the word or the two letters, right? AI yeah. is thrown around. Being thrown uh, around, right? Yeah. And, and a lot of that, once you start scratching under the surface, it's, re it's really just supercharged algorithms. Algorithms. Badly written right. algorithms that yes. are cobbled together. Yes. And I, I don't want you guys to get into the deep dive of what is AI. You know, I'm, I'm not, that's where I'm going. But just to hear that you guys actually have AI engineers that are behind the scenes doing mm. this at least gives me somebody who <laughs> has dealt a little bit with the AI world, yeah. some confidence that you guys are really doing something. And of course, Zuby's seen the results using the AI feature already. Um, that So there's at least some proof to it. But if you want to talk to that, because there really is a distinct difference between setting up if then or some algorithms that are a little bit more mature versus true D you know, and I don't know what you guys are doing. I don't want you to tell me, you know, that you're using a neural network or whatever, but mm -hmm. there is a big jump between those two topics of, you know, um, the algorithm versus what true AI is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You want to say this? So we're, we'll actually go into our AI model uh, and share with your audience right. exactly how it works. Well, there you go. We get to see yeah. the, super, the secret sauce. Yes, yeah, yeah. Well, well, there you go. Don't we're, tell we're, anyone. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're not, heads up. Yeah, we're not afraid heads up. of people copying because it's yeah. really complicated. It took yeah. years of engineering. That's right. uh, and uh, you know, the, the they main get difference- the ideas, but they don't have the paper to do it. Yeah, the, the, the main difference is the machine learning. You're basically, you, you have, uh, you, you learn about the account base and then, then um, also you learn about um, specific profile, specific ASINs. So it's a combination of you know, learning, and then it continues to, um, it, it, it would actually change depending on who the competitor is. Um, and it continues to learn as more and more competitors add it can, in. It can evolve. Just yeah, like it evolves, yeah, yeah, just like AI. So we'll go into that in a little bit. And then we'll just give you some main differences between uh, you know, AI powered and rule-based, um, because that gets thrown around a lot. It's like a market buzzword, you hear it all the time, but uh, you know, what's the difference between a true AI and, and what's who claim to be an AI, but uh, um, they, they don't ever release a real AI? Yeah, gotta be what, mindful of those people. Yeah. Yeah. So for uh, AI uh, powered, uh, you know, it automatically adjusts, you know, according to the market conditions. Um, and whereas the rule base, you know, it's, it's priced according to predefined rules, like iterations after iterations, maybe certain conditions are met, then it kicks in. Uh, if it's a new rule, if it's something that they they don't see happening, then it, it will not uh, perform differently than what's been set up. And then um, for our AI powered rules, it's fast and simple to set up, whereas the rule base is highly customizable. There's a lot of checks and, and buttons you need to you know, check, right. you need to do the settings. Um, and for the AI powered, you have the highest potential for the profits and sales, uh, because whereas Let's say you're using rule base, you might predefine by a certain percentage or a certain uh, certain price drop or a price increase. The AI will actually, you know, give you the best optimum price, and it will continue to raise that price once you get to the buy box. Uh, so um, the AI actually aggressively targets the buy box, can you know, compared to a rule base where it moderately targets the buy box. And then uh, the most importantly is the algorithm; it continuously learns over time. Whereas the rule-based strategy, it is uh, static. It doesn't change, it's fixed. 
So um, maybe we could discuss a little bit, um, you know, what's the difference between a true AI compared to like algorithm, like an yeah, algorithmic rule-based. Yeah. Yeah, rule base. Yeah, what, what are your thoughts? Well, um, for me personally, I think the definition of AI requires the ability to learn. So that's why machine learning is very important. Um, I think a lot of the, the, the reason why a lot of the, the, the buzzwords, the AI, the artificial intelligence gets thrown around loads because some people actually mix, uh, they actually misunderstood what the artificial intelligence is. They may even think that AI actually means like algorithmic intelligence, something of the sort. So uh, there's a huge, there's actually a distinct difference in that. And I think here we sort of also need to talk about what rule base is. So people who actually understand what differentiates the artificial intelligence reprises um, to the rule-based ones. So for the um for the rule-based, um, you have a set of predetermined rules for the rule-based. And it's not saying that algorithm rules are bad. It's just that they're not AI and they're fixed. And so the prices will actually get changed based on the parameters that you set for your rule-based reprises. And there's a lot of a condition you can actually um, do. It's just very time consuming. And that's why, um, even though it's very customizable with the setup, but it requires a lot of effort. And another thing is that uh, usually for the rule-based repricer, algorithmic reprices, yeah, um, they have um, a lot of different profiles because it has a lot of settings that you need to um, set, you need to adjust to get the result that you want. But this is not the case for AI. AI actually knows what you want when you set a pretty fun, uh, set up behavior, you know, assign a behavior to the list of things that you want to reprise. And so you would know in what you want and you wouldn't learn the patterns of your competitor, the present patterns, and you also understand the Amazon's buy box algorithm. Not so much of um, knowing everything about Amazon buy box algorithm because that's a trade secret, but you will try to understand how feasible it is for your listings to win the buy box at a specific price. And that's the difference. Rule based price doesn't know that. It's uh, more of a trial and error. It's like when you send out emails to your um, to your audience, you always, you always need to do A-B testing, right? Well, for AI, it has a sort of difference of selections for them to test. But for rule based it's just, it's just trial and error. It's A-B testing. You, need to, you only can have like, you know, um, one or two, um, I'll say case, cases at a time for you to actually try out see if this rule will work for these listings. It's very time consuming. Yeah, so yeah. Um, basically, like we're saying for the AI, we actually, it's based on data, not as human interactions mm. uh, where the human needs to go do the yeah. setting. It's a lot of manual labor yeah. rule based. And then uh, it, it, it's machine learning. It learns all the competitors who are in there. Um, so let's go into a little bit about the AI model here uh, so you can better understand. And basically, uh, you know, the AI model, uh, we actually have three parts here. Uh, you know, this is the data source, the AI machine learning model, and then how exactly it reprices. So how do these three parts work? Um, for the first part in the data sourcing part, the AI model takes into consideration multiple factors, such as the ASIN, how many competitors do you have? Who are the competitors? Uh, also, which Amazon marketplace are you competing in? It also factors in the buy box and the seller type, your fulfillment type, whether it's FBA, FBM, uh, or whether it's uh, seller fulfillment prime. Um, so it also sees where you're shipping from. Then it also sees the condition of the product, uh, whether the product is new, so you, new or used. And all of these factors go uh, into the AI learning model. So Basically, uh, you know, we're getting all of that data. And then with the middle part here in a section, you know, we actually have uh, developed and trained it from historic data. And then so you could actually, the AI will test and identify the different relationships between them. And then each account will receive their very own unique AI that would predict a unique ASINs environment. Yeah. Um, so when you start out, it would actually price up and down with your minimum and max. Um, and this is normal because the AI is learning your competitor's behavior and how to win the buy box. So it's important to set the right minimums and maximums. Then once it reduces the range, it will predict the right price, the precise optimum price to win the buy box. And then in the third section here, um, once it predicts the price, it would either raise the price uh, when the AI determines model determined it can, or it actually lower the price to capture the buy box you know, the AI model will determine whether, you know, that lower price can win the buy box 
and it'll reprice as close as the buy box to be able to capture that buy box. So that's you know how our AI model works. It takes in you know the whole Amazon environment. Uh, for, so it takes into account of that. So there's a central learning model, and then there's an account learning model. So it, it takes these two factors in, and then it, it predicts the right pricing. Uh, so that's you know where we analyze all of the data, and then when new competitors join, we're actually doing the competitive profile. So that's how our AI model exactly works. What happens then, if we don't put a max price and we just put a min price? If you then, just put a min price and don't put a max, then uh, you won't be able to reprice in our in our repricing software because in order for you to reprice, you need to put your cost, your min, and your max. Yeah. This is also another <laughs> um, assurance that uh, your prices will not be priced uh, above or below your expectations. And you know, it's like going to a restaurant and you want to order something, you still need to let the uh, the waiters the waitress know what you're going to order, right? They can't mind read you. I think AI can't mind read you. So that's why you still need to give them like a set of um, um, like expectations for them to reprise from. So to answer your question, I think um, you're asking like, perhaps like what should you set the max price as? And then um, in our earlier example, you go to the competitor analysis and we look at who has... Who, who has put the highest price and is still in that listing, still within those 20 people, uh, that's the, the top 20, and then you put that price in as the max. This way, uh, you know, the AI will continue to raise the buy box as high as it can uh, against all of the competitors in that top 20 listing. So that's that's the strategy that we would actually recommend. Yeah. I like that. Okay. And then we want to you know, show you some actual results for your audience so that they understand you know, exactly how the AI works. And they could also see the differences between the rule base. Um, so if, if we look at um, this specific seller and this seller, he's quite, he's very experienced. He's been selling for many years. He could find, he could source very well. And then you can see that uh, right here, the buy box price uh, is at 197.49. Um, and uh, you know, this, is, this is for used goods. So you know, one thing to be clear, the used uh, buy box, you know, is different than the new buy box. Yeah, and our AI can do both of them. Yeah, so that's that's something to be clear. There's 12 competitors in here. You can see that there's actually two FBM sellers who actually have a lower price, and also a seller fulfillment prime, you know, seller that that can uh, provide a lower price. But the AI actually, you know, gives a higher price. So it actually uses a higher price, but it's just a little bit less than the next FBA seller who actually has a better, better reviews, has more reviews, it has a higher positive rating. You know, these factors are the same, but because we're priced a penny under, we're actually able to capture yeah. that uh, buy box. Yeah, beating the Goliath. Yes. So you, you see that precision that this, this AI has has done. And you can just look at you know, the repricing it's done. So uh, we could see from this table, you know, all the greens are the ones when you add to your buy box and all the reds are the ones, you know, when you're not in the buy box and you're trying to, you know, capture the buy box back. So the price is up and down. So it prices up and down depending on the competitor. And you can see that we're actually competing against this FBA seller specifically. And then we're actually repricing. So we're actually beating them and taking that buy box at the highest possible price that we could possibly do. And then as a result, when we looked at, uh, you know, this seller's uh, business report, you know, compared to the weeks before, uh, we could see an uh, increase, uh, almost 10% um, for their buy box win percentage, right? So the AI is designed to help you get a higher buy box win percentage. Yeah. And then this seller, you know, we see results that are even better than this, and we're going to show you. Um, so you can see that it's a 10% increase for the buy box. And, and let me tell you, for this seller, they actually moved almost all of their listings to AI. Yeah, so you could actually see the main differences uh, between using AI, and you could clearly see the difference between using AI and also uh, for rule base. So you could actually see a clear differentiation. And then this is another, another uh, example that we want to use. Uh, this is a seller that's selling a new listing. Uh, there's over 20 sellers on here. And you can see that this is before they are using AI. So there's actually about uh, eight different FBM sellers that are priced below them and an uh, FBA seller that's priced below them with a back order here. 
And what you're going to see is after turning on the AI, again, uh, it goes right to, uh, it doesn't go to the lowest price. It doesn't go to the lowest price. It goes to the price that it can get the buy box, uh, which is at 2261. And then it starts repricing up and up and up and up again until 2282. So if you go back to this screen, you could see that it is actually, you know, higher price than, uh, you know, FBA seller um, and also higher price than maybe four other FBM sellers and it's still winning the buy box because it believes, it, it knows that you can win the buy box at that price. And again, you know, this seller, uh, they, they just switched on the AI repricer uh, for them. And for that period of time, they actually increased from, uh, from uh, 4% to almost 22%. So that's a 17% on average of increase. So, you know, what we generally see, you know, as uh, for people who turn on the AI repricer, uh, and you could actually compare your listing, assuming that you have a good min price, so you could have something to work with. Um, and also you had raised the, the price for the max to set the right max. Um, we actually see on average a 12 to 20% increase in buy box win percentage for uh, the listings that changes uh, to AI. This is from our data from the majority of our customers. Yeah, and of course, it really depends on you know, which category you're in. Uh, the number of competitors um, that you're selling, but this is what we've seen from, you know, if you have five to 20, you know, your listings are not at the min price. So this is the results that we've seen. Yeah. Um, do, do you have anything to, to add on to that? It's fascinating stuff. Okay. So, so, so to summarize, you know, what are the key benefits of using an AI repricer? Like what exactly? Um, well, well, one, you know, it can maximize your sales. And how does it maximize sales? Because it aggressively seizes the buy box. Uh, and when you get the buy box, you can actually get more sales. Then it also maximizes your profits. For incremental repricing, it raises the buy box price. It's also a lot more competitive. And it's more competitive because it has the machine learning algorithms um, that it continuously learn. As new competitors come in, it learns the behavior, it profiles them, and then it gives you an increase. It gives you the optimum price to win the buy box. And what we see is when you use the AI repricer, it reprices a lot more. It reprices a lot more than when you're using rule-based is because it's intelligent. It knows when people are coming in and it, it, when there's more competitors, it starts repricing more and more to get, get you that buy box. One of the most important things is also the setup. It's so easy to set up. It's much faster and to set up than uh, using uh, algorithmic rule-based repricing. And it's a lot easier uh, to, to use. And you know, we do the heavy lifting for you. So you don't have to go into the complicated settings. And you know, if you're advanced, uh, for, that's something for you, that's you know, definitely fine. But you know, for, the, for most of our sellers who use this, they, you know, they have very, very good results. Uh, and it's very quick. Yeah. yeah. It's back up by science. <laughs> yes. That's right. Does it does it reprice um, based on the fifteen minute timeline or is it faster? It's um we actually have different um tier of um repricing speed. So if you're currently under the um, twenty five and fifty, it's repricing at around the uh, I'll say twelve to fifteen minutes for for the repricing speed. And if you're on the hundred dollars, it's a instant repricer. So you will reprise from um, anywhere from from two minutes to five minutes, as long um, you know because Amazon doesn't really change that price immediately, even when you do it on Seller Central. So you technically just when you, when the when the price is um, sent to Amazon, it literally just means that you're actually repricing um, as fast as what Amazon can um, change the price. So yes, uh, hundred dollars has instant repricing, but twenty five and fifty dollars has the uh, fifteen minutes repricer. It's the so same as the algorithmic one, right? That, that's that's the, correct. Yeah, that's correct. Algorithm has has the 15 minutes because um yeah, you know, um for the hundred dollars one, the reason why we have the interim price today is because uh, the server cost is a lot more higher. Yeah, so, you know, we that's why we have um a different pricing plan. It, it <laughs> but, is actually yeah. it's actually really ex, it's really expensive, yeah, really expensive to yeah. to uh do AI repricing yeah. because um, we take we billions of data. Yeah, we check the um, NLP as some yeah. service because I, I also have access to that. Uh, usually I need to monitor the AWS structures. And for that, uh, we you know we actually spend, um, you know, the cost is 
it's, it's actually quite high for us even to offer AI reprices on hundred dollars plans. Uh, that's why you may see some of the so-called AI reprices on other companies. They actually have it for like five hundred dollars and a lot more. Some of the companies even charge you by a percentage of the uh, revenue you make. And this is and this is the reason because the server cost is very high and the R and D cost is high as well. So I think hundred dollars for the AI plan. If I were a seller and if I want to, you know, AI repricer, I think hundred dollars is a steal. But you know, yeah, and yeah. and for fifty dollars plan, we also have AI listings that you can try out, and we we also will show you in the very near future how you compare the listing between AI and non AI, so you can actually see the results for yourself. Uh, we want to make AI available to most of the Amazon sellers. Yeah, so that's why we're offering it at um, these levels. That's right. Yeah, we want everyone to be able to yeah. use them. We, we think yeah. there shouldn't be a paywall to get the Amazon seller from using the great stuff. And I think um, once when we sort of um, lift that barriers and to let to allow a lot more sellers to get access to the air of prices is actually much better. Um, I think to the general Amazon community as a whole, and because we can, you know, you can price smarter, you know, more optimally than you would ever before, and it's great for both parties, for us and for the sellers. We're really grateful for you guys taking the time to walk through some of the details and some of the high level stuff. We're really excited to uh, see what else you guys come out with, and. Uh, I know from this experience, uh, certainly some of our uh, listeners and and some of the students that we're coaching are going to have more questions. And you've just put up the slide with all of the contact details, which I'll make sure to put into the the description of the uh, the episode. Um, Do we have anything that you wanted to add or or ask as we we wrap up today? I'll do a plug for um, uh, on my own as well Um, for any sellers whether you're part of our program or not and you're just watching this episode or listening to this episode if you have the capital um, and you are a serious amazon seller and you're looking to really grow and expand your business you can have significant cost savings by a pl- by by signing up for the annual plan uh, for the ai because then you don't have to worry about the monthly charges you get a s- significant discount on the annual plan and you can seriously consider the, the repricer, the Be Cool AI repricer as part of your team. Um, and you can really grow and concentrate on each of the different ASINs that you're going to be getting, the different inventory you're getting. And you can master the repricer, understanding how to best use it and really maximize your returns on it. That's absolutely right. Yeah. Even I want to sign up, right? <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> um, you know, th- this is exclusive for uh, FBA Profits community. And we appreciate our time to be on your podcast and um, to co-work together to grow our business and help all the Amazon sellers out there. Yeah. Thank you Thank for you inviting guys. us, really. Yeah, really appreciate it. Yeah. Really our pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much.